Hi everyone and welcome back to another Modeling Seb video. Before we begin, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year depending on when I get this video out. This episode will be the last one from this Whippet series as well as for this year. As I'm preparing the model for this round of weathering, I must thank you all for helping me hit 120 subscribers and I really encourage you to join the Modeling Discord server as we are starting an interesting group build themed around jungle vehicles. This will start on January 1st so feel free to join and it will be going on until the end of March. Enjoy. Now, back to the task at hand. This video will be completely focused on mud and the final weathering steps. To start with, I decided to add some streaking effects to begin laying some grime groundwork. This is made from a combination of previously applied enamel pin wash and gloss. This is applied on several panels in a streaking fashion following a logical direction. This means I gently tap and blend these grime effects on the flat panels like the top of the whippet next to the hatches. These little details are very important as they help blend the model in and tie it together even if they will sadly be covered up later on. Using engine grime as sort of grey greenish enamel wash, I outline parts that would potentially get dirty from oil or grease. The covers for the sprockets were one of these areas as no matter what they would most likely end up being covered in mud, so this is a nice place to get a feel for the way the enamel paint flows. Because of the heavy mud being applied later, I do decide to coat it in quite a thicker layer. This gives it a lot more colour and texture and allows for it to stand out at the end. When this engine grime enamel dries, it does so completely matte, which is in stark contrast to the next paint line, the fuel stains. This is a glossy paint which is meant to simulate, well, fuel stains as the bottle says. This weird box on the front of the tank turns out to actually be the fuel tank, which is surprising considering how exposed it is. You would think that the fuel tank is probably one of the more important components and should be hidden well, but the designers thought otherwise. Now this does allow for some interesting details, this massive part of the model is going to be the most visually interesting part from the front, and definitely something your eyes will latch onto as soon as you see it. Because it's a flat surface, the process is the same as before. This means you have to gently tap into the surface the enamel paints with a brush slightly dampened with enamel thinner. I added one runoff streak, but most of these fuel stains were cupped within the previously applied engine grime. I also used these on the side vents to make it seem as if oil is dripping from them, like you would see on many Soviet tanks. This is another one of these small visual details that will probably not be seen, but it's nice to have. Now I have to tackle what most of you probably came here for, and that is the mud. Although this is a World War 1 tank and most of the time people will picture these as being completely covered in mud from front to aft, this won't be the case for this particular model. Since I usually build models with a more artistic interpretation rather than a historical one, this means that I have decided to put a little less mud on just so the underlying paint job and effects can still show through. I do this mainly so that the tracks can keep the tones we applied before, but that would mean that if the tracks were too clean, they would look out of place, so I have to do the same for the rest of the model. Either way, I begin to apply amyl acrylic mud in thick layers. Because it's an acrylic paste, you have to blend it in using water, and you have to do that almost immediately. I originally started off using a wide tattered brush, but I did change to a thinner one, and I do believe the results are better. The cool thing about the Whippet and the Matilda is that they both have these massive cutouts on the sides. This means that you can show the mud even though the road wheels are actually hidden. It's also a pretty unique feature that is found rarely on models. When this mud paste dries, usually within two and a half hours at most, you can continue on with the weathering. Now, because this product is intended to be used on dioramas, it leaves behind this glossy layer with visible brush marks. I guess this is one of the downsides of using your products in its unintended way, however this isn't very hard to fix. This is also the reason why I have to blend this mud in almost straight away. If you don't, this film will have way too many brush strokes and they will show through the mud. Now for the pre-dusting, I used the ultimate pre-dust I created in the Whippet post-shading video and added some German grey to it to make it just that tad bit darker. Now pre-dusting is easy and I would even argue that it's necessary to outline the next steps. Think of it as a roadmap or a blueprint for all the mud that you will want to apply. I'll be using these three ammo effects, the dry and turned earth as well as loose ground. The darkest of these being the turned earth was applied all over the previously pre-dusted areas, as well as in the corners where mud would most likely go. Here I applied it between the connecting points of the hull and the suspension sponsons. Now I blend this in with a few gentle upward streaks so that it's still visible but stays close to the edge. Following this, I applied a loose ground wet on the darkest parts of the mud, mixing in a little dry step to the centre of the previously applied effects, and mixing it wet so that they blend more evenly on the model itself. 
This is again all streaked to increase the effect and imagery that the mud was actually falling through there. This is prevalent by the marks that it's left. I now take this loose ground and apply it around the edges of the sponsons. Because the tracks would be very muddy, they would most likely have dirt falling from the sides of them constantly. For this, I almost outlined the whole edge with the effect being applied quite thick. This thickness, however, does allow for me to then streak it down, so that the sponsons appear more uniform rather than having the sides be clean and only the cutouts dirty. I do apply some of the dry earth splashes on the upper sides of the tank to show some of the dust being thrown up. These tonal changes really do work wonders in creating a more visually interesting model. Now, the last step for the mud is to apply some wet effects. For this, I'll be using Ammo Damp Mud. This premix enamel product is applied thick only in the darkest and most muddied areas of the tank, including the external edges. When I was doing this, I was almost thinking of it as chipping, with the loose ground being the artificial lighter colours and the wet mud being the darker and deeper chips. These are then gently streaked inside of the previously applied streaks. This pushes the idea that this is fresh and mud even more and makes the model just look wonderful by the end. These have so far been probably the most interesting part of the model, as if you remember I had done a big experiment on them. This being the application of several washes to create an intricate texture underneath the rust. Now, the thing I was worried about most was covering the tracks up with too much mud and weathering effect. So to avoid it, I limit it as much as possible. The tracks are weathered basically the exact same way as the rest of the tank, so there's nothing new here. But this will work as a nice recap for everything that has been done so far. Here I only applied a little bit of the acrylic mud onto the tracks, with it receiving a few slightly larger amounts, however it was still not that significant. A thing that you have to keep in mind with these is that they are workable plastic tracks, and so they are very delicate. Already at this stage they were falling apart, so I didn't want to put them through much more stress, as much as I could avoid that. I blend this in as quickly as possible, but this time I do give it a lot more care. This is because the tracks are, as I said before, functional, and I don't want to accidentally fuse them together with the drying film. Sadly, I did miss a few parts, but that wasn't a very big deal. Now, back to the ultimate pre-dusting. Again, the same colours I use, and the process is pretty much the same, just being more careful not to cover up the rust effects below. Due to the tracks being much smaller than a model, the number of enamels I could put on them is limited, so I choose to splash them on instead. From the bottle, they are already a nice consistency, as that's what they were made for, they are ammo splashes at the end of the day. However, I do prefer to thin them down slightly, just to make them a little more pleasant to use. This isn't anything significant, but I do highly recommend it. Before applying the splatters onto the tracks, I first get rid of any major excess on a piece of toilet paper, and then use the rest on the tracks. If there are any large amounts of splatters that I don't like, I can easily remove them with some white spirit, by either tapping them into the surface or rubbing them off. I do this with both the enamel tones to finish off the tracks. Finally, I apply a very small amount of damp mud in places where it would logically find itself, such as the centre of the tracks. Now, because in my mind these tracks would have mostly been hidden, I didn't really pay much attention to the insides, which was a problem because very little parts of it are visible. This means here I just applied mud, a random mixture of thick washes letting it dry and that was it. Finally, to tie the whole model together, I do spatter it all. Now, you watching me struggle to put on the tracks marks the end of this video and this series as a whole. Although that's not really a bad thing and I do believe I managed to make it before the end of the year, at least for where I am. Also, if the photos do seem a little off in a few places, it is because I had to rush this video quite a bit and these photos were taken as soon as I finished recording. This means not all of the enamels had time to dry, but there was nothing I could do. I had to catch a flight literally half an hour after finishing this. But either way, so far this has been quite a productive year, with a few models on the workbench and them being filmed into series. These will eventually come up sooner or later, but I still am yet to finish the majority of them. Now again, this will just be mostly boring chatter, so if you want to, you are free to go. However, I do want to ask again for you to join the Discord server and join the group build starting January 1st. And as soon as I come back from holiday, I will start a model for this group build and I'll upload it right here as this first series of January of 2024. Now, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications as you will not want to miss the next series of videos as the kit I'll be building is quite interesting and unique. Plus, it's a fun way to watch me struggle with full interior kit for once. Again, I want to apologise for the quality of this video being subpar at best, and that's because I am really rushing it. Currently for me, it's New Year's Eve, and I'm trying my hardest to finish this video off and upload it on time. But that again will be everything, and I hope you enjoy these closing photos, and I'll see you all in the next year, and I hope the next year will be great for you. Take care and goodbye.